What is going on, my friends? Check this out. Today's a special day. Actually, every single day that I record something new is a special day. But today is a little bit more special because I have the 2020 BMW F900R in front of me, and this baby just came out. So, Gary, over at BMW of San Diego, allowed me to take this baby out for you guys for a few hours and do a little demo ride and review the bike for you. And I'm super, super excited to get on this thing and take it for a little spin and talk about it like I do in my usual videos. So hop on for the ride and let's get going. Welcome to another episode. Thanks so much for joining me once again. Check this out. Look what I have in front of me. I have a 2020 BMW F900R. This is the brand new 2020 model and it replaces the previous generation's F800. They've made a whole lot of changes with this F900 and today I'm going to be discussing with you what I like about this bike, the things that I probably don't like about this bike which are probably going to be next to zero, and of course I'm going to talk a little bit about suspension, the different ride modes. It's got a trick LCD screen over here. It's got all the bells and whistles. Now, before we get started with this review, I want to give a huge shout out to Gary over at San Diego BMW Motorcycles. He provided me this wonderful motorcycle for me to review for you guys. And thank you so much, Gary. I really appreciate it. If you guys haven't checked out BMW Motorcycles of San Diego, they got some awesome prices, a huge selection. And this bike could be demoed over there in case you're interested in buying one for yourself. So first things first, let's talk about the styling of the spike. As you can see, it's very, very aggressive looking. It's a hyper naked motorcycle and its main competitors at the current moment is the 790 Duke from KTM, as well as the Yamaha FC09. The FC09 has about 10 more horsepower than this. However, the things that this bike has compared to the FC09 and the KTM far outweigh the 10 horsepower differences here and there. It's a very masculine looking bike. It's pretty macho looking. I got a lot of views on the way here. A lot of people were commenting on it while I was riding the motorcycle from their window. They were looking and waving hello to me. It's, it attracts attention. It's one of those bikes that is just very, very masculine, very macho looking. If there's anything that you know about BMW is that they offer a plethora of different options whenever you're choosing a motorcycle or a car from them. In the motorcycle realm, you get pretty much a standard color um, and standard options whenever you're purchasing it from the dealership, but with BMW, they kick it up a step or two. So with this motorcycle, you get three different colors. Right now, we're looking at the blue metallic color, but there's also a Hockenheim red uh, that has like silver chrome accents and the top is red, which happens to be my favorite color. Uh, unfortunately, this bike does not come with the full options, but there are a couple of options on this bike that you can add. The base price on this motorcycle is 8990 When you factor in all those costs, you're talking for the base price of the motorcycle, you're talking about $9,000. Now, if we look at the opposite side of the bike, considering this is a naked bike, the exhaust on this is pretty slim. I love that about this bike. It's pretty slim. And on the way riding it over here, it sounded pretty good. It sounded very throaty. The engine sounds like a V-twin. 
It sounds, uh, and I dare to say this, it sounds sort of like a Ducati engine, kind of like a watered down Ducati. Uh, and I say watered down, not because it doesn't sound good, but because a Ducati is just very, very loud and aggressive. If I were to compare it to the loudness of a Ducati, I would probably say that it's half the, the loudness of that, but it's got a very punchy, very throaty kind of sound. Fairly aggressive look on this bike as well from the right side. You have these chrome accents, very, very beautiful. You got the blue over here. It's a very sporty looking bike. I can imagine if I owned this bike, I would probably remove this and put the tail tidy here. It would streamline the entire bike and make it a lot more sexy looking. Now at the heart of this motorcycle is an 895cc twin cylinder, 99 horsepower uh, engine with 67 foot pounds of torque, kicking in at 6,500 RPM. So it's pretty punchy, just like a naked bike should be. It's got a lot of low end, uh, a lot of low end grunt and torque. So it's definitely a lively bike. And I was riding it around the neighborhood just before I got here. And uh, at the same time, it's also a very comfortable ride because it's also, it's an upright bike. Now, as far as ergonomics are concerned, there's one thing that I don't like about the bike is that the foot peg is very, very close. As you can tell, it's very, very close to my calf. And whenever I'm stopping at a stoplight, this does get in the way. I wish it was a little bit more forward or a little bit backwards. Otherwise, uh, the bike is pretty comfortable. The seating position is pretty comfortable as well. I'm pretty much upright when I'm holding this bike. I believe there is an option to extend this. The handlebars a little bit higher up, so you can choose for that option. But uh, the bike comes in three different rider modes. So you get dynamic, you get rain mode, you get road. Those are three different modes that you can change on the fly. Uh, the, uh, I tried it on the way here, and if, you, if you're on the throttle, it won't allow you to choose it, but you, it, once you get off the throttle, it'll go to it automatically. Besides that, BMW gives you the option of choosing three different seat heights whenever you're purchasing this bike. So the lowest seat height is going to be 30 inches, which is perfect for someone like myself. I'm hovering anywhere between 5'6 and 5'7. But if you're a taller stature person, uh, a, three, a 33 inch height seat would be perfect for you. And then the middle tier, which comes by default, is a 32 inch seat. So once again, from uh, it's go it goes from 30 to 32 to 33 inches as the highest seat and the lowest seat being 30 inches. So between having three different seat heights for different inseams makes it an ideal type of bike to choose because other bikes just come in one different, uh, one different size. It's whatever that the company releases with the motorcycle, but with this option of having to choose your own C size, it just makes it a whole lot better. And I like the fact that I can choose that whenever I'm purchasing the vehicle. Other than that, top speed on the bike is 134 miles an hour. It goes pretty fast. Perhaps we might go to Mexico. But let's see if we can go to Mexico. Now, considering that this is a naked sport bike, it's got 17 inch rims in the front, 17 in the back but it's got a 120 tire in the front and it's got a 180 in the rear. The 180 in the rear is the same size as my Panigale 959 for reference. Now the Panigale 959 is a super bike. It's a super sport, hovers anywhere around 180 miles an hour. And it comes with 150 horsepower, which is 50 more than this. So considering that it has the same size tires as my Ducati, that's pretty impressive. As far as the fuel tank is concerned, it's got a 3.4 gallon fuel tank. If it was four, four and a half gallons, I believe that would be a little bit better. Considering the size of this fuel tank and how wide everything is, the front suspension is powered by a Showa suspension. And unfortunately, the forks are not adjustable. And as far as the rear is concerned, uh, I believe you can change the rear. The bike does come with options. So if you opt in for the technology package, but I believe the option is about a $2,000 option. And that gives you all the electronic packages that this bike comes with. And one of them is dynamic suspension, which you can change directly with the LCD screen. So as always, I hope that I covered everything in this introduction. So if there's anything that I'm missing, or if you guys have any additional questions, write down in the comment section, let me know what you guys have in mind. With that said, I'm pretty much ready to ride the bike now. I'm pretty excited. So hope you guys are as well. Let's get going. All right, so I was starving. So I decided to come down to this pizzeria here, eat some pizza, get some carbs in my system before I ride. Now we're gonna get rolling and uh, should be a pretty good time. Let's talk about this bike now. Although the bike weighs 465 pounds, once you're rolling, it does not feel at all like it's a huge bike. The thought doesn't come to your mind that you're riding a big heavy bike. Big six and a half inch LCD. Looks absolutely gorgeous as you bring this bike all the way to red line. The LCD screen 
it's got the same font as all the brand new BMWs. So it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't have the uh, the touch features that the BMW the, the BMW cars have these days. But that being said, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful screen that makes riding the bike just simply a joy. It's really fun riding this motorcycle. So it's got a very throaty sound. And uh, you know that you're riding something super exciting and super peppy. Unfortunately, this bike does not come with the up and down quick shifter. There's an option for that, which you can get in the tech package. But uh, this is a base model and it does not have the tech package, unfortunately. Riding this bike on the highway as I am right now, just like the other BMW I rode the other time, the Cafe Racer, the RT90. I don't know if you've seen that video, but if you haven't, make sure to check it out. Honestly, I'm starting to get used to these upright bikes and I'm starting to enjoy them. I've been riding sport bikes for as long as I've been riding a motorcycle. And uh, I, I'm just starting to, I'm just recently starting to ride these, uh, these upright bikes. And it's really nice because the other day I went to Orange County and I just wish that I could have took my bike there. But unfortunately, one hour of riding my, one and a half hours of riding my bike there, one and a half hours back, especially a whole day of riding and testing our bikes, it's not something I want to do. But with something like this, which is upright, super comfortable, the seat is super, super soft, very comfortable. Although it's not as comfortable as that R9T that I rode the other day. The R9T, it's got this gel seat that's absolutely silk, beautiful. And it's got that gorgeous leather. But this being a sporter bike, a sportier type of bike, I can understand why the seat is not like that. Ergonomically, the handlebars are pretty high up. I don't feel a strain on my neck. I don't feel strain on my shoulders or in my arms. It's one of those bikes that I can ride for long distances. It's not necessarily a cruiser by any means. You can take it on road trips if you wanted to. The only downside to this bike is that once you're doing past 80 miles an hour, there's a lot of wind. So right now I'm cruising along at 76 miles per hour on six gear, but everything is nice and comfortable. We have different riding modes on this bike. We got road, we got dynamic, and we got rain. So let me, let me speed up a little bit and I'm gonna change it to dynamic mode. There we go, dynamic mode. All right, so now it kicked on. As soon as you let go of the throttle, it kicks into dynamic mode. Dynamic mode basically changes everything for you automatically. The ABS, the traction control. And whenever you get the uh, electronics package, I believe it's a $2,000 option, you have all sorts of electronics. You can change the dampers, all that is electronic as well. The ride, ability, the ride quality, you can change all that. So unfortunately this bike only has the standard options, but it's good that I'm testing out the base version. There's a lot of people that buy the bike usually end up buying the base version anyways. The LCD display, like I mentioned, is absolutely gorgeous. So there's a little menu button here. As you hit the menu button, you have all sorts of different options. But what, what I'm looking at right now is my vehicle dynamics. It's telling me that the engine right now is 185 degrees. And it's telling me that I'll be I'll be done with fuel at 105 miles, 104, and it tells you the voltage of uh, of the battery, and I like that a lot. So you also have an onboard computer. The onboard computer gives you your entire total journey. So I've been with riding this bike for an hour and 48 minutes, I guess. Uh, it's got a trip computer, the range of how much you have left on the bike. And uh, the consumption. The current consumption right now is averaged out, I believe, at 38.5 miles per gallon, which is pretty good. It could be better than that, but that's pretty good. Right now I'm at 5,000 RPM, which is the power band for all the torque. So if I give it wide open throttle, like right now, here we go, one, two, three. It's got plenty of grunt. You'll be hitting triple digits really quickly. So plenty of torque, plenty of power. It just wants to keep going. It just wants to keep going. There's no flat spots at all. I'm very surprised that the sixth gear just keeps going like that. You would think that there would be some flat spots, but there isn't. So if you wanna if you wanna know how I feel when I ride this bike, I feel excited when I ride this bike. 
it's a pretty exciting bike to ride and it's pretty upright the good news is that you got the sporty looking feel and you got the sporty looking ride like the bike is just sporty looking it's very aggressive the same S1000RR dash that's on that is also included on this so the bike just it's just begging to be ridden fast it's just begging to be taken around the corners it's very light very nimble very tossable like right now I'm kind of like slaloming back and forth it doesn't feel heavy at all but I am cruising at 70 miles an hour 80 miles an hour and slaloming back and forth and it's pretty planted let's see if we can rev match this bike and downshift it Oh, 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 baby. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Love it. Now, the road surface that I'm riding right now is bumpy. And I did feel the bumps, but it's nothing like it's super harsh or anything like that. We're going to be going to a road where I'm going to be feeling more bumps. And I'm going to kind of compare it to my sport bike. Because as you know, my sport bike has the Olin suspension. And the Olin suspension on that is like jar... It's like jaw, it's like jaw breaking hard. So I'm going to see what this bike is like because the suspension on this unfortunately is not adjustable and it doesn't have the electronic suspension. So stock, if you wanted to know what it's like, I'll be able to tell you in a little bit. Off the line, plenty of grunt. You can get the 60 really fast. On those hot summer days, whenever we get to about 80 degrees, I'm really going to enjoy riding this bike. Without that windscreen, you feel every single thing. So this is the bumpy road I was talking about. It's going to get real bumpy really fast. Watch this. Alright, there we go. Bump here. Now listen to my voice as I speak to you and hear these little bumps and see these bumps. So it's not bad actually, it's pretty, the, the suspension takes the bumps pretty, pretty good. Yeah, it's not nearly as bad as my Panigale. So it's got a pretty good suspension in a standard mode, goes over the bumps pretty good. Nothing to complain about there. Let's see if I hit red and see what happens. Good power. That was wide open throttle for you guys. Unfortunately, it doesn't have quick shift, so I couldn't stay on wide open throttle. I had to let go. So if you want to know what the acceleration's like, there you have it. takes in the turn so beautifully my god once you point to the corner and you look it goes by itself wonderful I mean it doesn't feel ultra light but it's still very flickable for 465 pounds tires must be the, doing that trick and that suspension I bet when you're traveling about 60 miles an hour with this bike and you're in fourth fifth gear you don't really hear the, the exhaust as much, you hear more of the wind than anything else. In case you're wondering what kind of helmet I have, because that makes a huge difference, I have the, uh, I have the Shoei 1200 RF helmet. So it's a pretty quiet helmet to begin with. It's very aerodynamic. So depending on what kind of helmet you wear, the wind is going to make a huge difference. But with this bike, like I mentioned, the exhaust, it's got a pretty throaty exhaust. But you hear most of it when you're traveling under 40 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour. Above that, you hear mostly the wind. But on, uh, on long road trips, if you put some, uh, some earplugs, that'll probably be best because then you won't hear that much road noise or anything else and you can fully concentrate on the road. This is not really one of those aggressive, super aggressive bikes, but I'm sure they sell exhaust that you can put on this bike that would make it much louder than it currently is. But that being said, I have no problems with the way it sounds right now. I think it's perfect. And if I buy this bike, I'm going to be using it on a daily basis for my commutes here and there. There are a lot of times that I wish I had a bike like this to take on road trips. Now, sometimes I want to go to LA and back. Sometimes I want to go to Orange County and visit the different dealerships and back. 
I don't want to have to drive my car and put miles on my car because it's going to be cheaper for me to put miles on a bike than it would be on a car, right? So I prefer to do that on a bike than I would on my cars. Once in a while I do like riding my car because it's, it's very comfortable and I have a lot of stuff to carry with me. In those situations, I completely, I, I, I will definitely take a car, but in most situations, I think riding a bike like this would be much better, considering that it's so damn comfortable to ride. I, I feel no pressure on my back, I feel no pressure on my arms, no pressure on my shoulders, and no pressure on my neck. I've, I've also gotten used to the bike getting pushing me back a little bit, the wind pushing me back a little bit. So it's, it's not something that is terrible, but it's something that's noticeable. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Pugue probably sells a windscreen for this bike as well. The, the third-party comp third companies probably sell windscreens for this bike that you can purchase, and that'll definitely uh, save you from a lot of wind. Let's go towards the corner, Papa Yui, and go back by the beach. Right here would be a good spot. Yeah. The bike is pretty confidence-inspiring, to be honest with you. At first I was a little annoyed by the size of it and how much it weighs. You put it into first gear and take off, that's the only time that you notice that it's a heavy bike. Otherwise you don't feel that at all. Good job BMW, good job. Stop here for a little bit, check out the views. Gotta love SoCal. That was nice. It's too bad it's cloudy today. Oh man, turning on this bike and then seeing the RPM levels go up to 2000 and then retreat back to one, somewhere around one is pretty, pretty. I love it. I think I'm gonna do a whole review of this pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the time where you guys hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel. Hopefully you enjoy these videos. I know I enjoy making them for you. So if you enjoy them as well, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. There's a lot of good stuff on my channel already and there's gonna be plenty more. <laughs> oh baby oh yes and it loves the twisties look at that oh man it just kind of leans in on its own no input from me all I gotta do is just look telepathic baby this thing has got telepathic steering wonderful very surprising did not expect that the bike is so planted, my goodness. Not only is it an exciting bike, but it also handles brilliantly. Slaloming back and forth, man. I, I never thought that I would be this comfortable, and I never thought that the bike would be this confidence-inspiring once it moves. I really love it. Really, really, really like it. I really, really, really like it. Honestly, I like it. I want one. I want one. I want one with the 30... Uh, if I were to customize one for myself, I would get it with the 30 inch seat. That'll make me even more con confident riding the bike. I would get all the electronic packages. It would basically be a $12,000 bike. Me and Gary would have to make a deal. <laughs> Gary, my man, let's make a deal. Let's talk business. On this bike, it's a much smoother, refined experience. Quality-wise, it's a very refined experience. You, you definitely feel like you're, you're riding something that, is, that costs a lot, and uh, a lot of work has gone into it. This bike is uh, produced in Germany. I forgot exactly where, 
But you're, you're, you're getting a German bike here. You're getting German engineering. Uh, it's not necessarily a BMW and it's made in like uh, Detroit, Michigan or anything like that. It's not one of those kind of bikes. You're getting a BMW which is European and it's made in Europe. That's definitely a plus. And as we already know, the Germans make quite amazing cars. I got two of them. I got my Porsche and I got my BMW 335. Just wants to turn on its own. All you gotta do is just look and that's it. My God, it turns in so well. And of course, because it's BMW, it's got self-canceling turn signals. We're almost here. And I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the BMW F900R, the replacement to the 800. I think BMW did a fantastic job on this bike. I love the fact that I can ride this bike for long commutes and my back is not going to kill me. I don't find anything that I don't like about the bike. I believe I talked about some of the things that I don't like about the bike. For instance, the, uh, the fact that it weighs 465 pounds. But it is what it is and when you're moving, you don't feel it. So, eh, it doesn't really bother me much. I thought I'd point it out though. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. And here we are and there's my BMW. Oh man, what a pretty bike. What an enjoyable day today has been. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me for another episode. I really appreciate it. Now is the time for you to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Hopefully you like this. We're at BMW of San Diego. Check these guys out. BMW Motorrad of San Diego. Check these guys out. Owner is such a nice down-to-earth guy. Salespeople are pretty cool as well. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Please stay tuned for more videos of the F900. I'm going to do an LCD dash review soon. And maybe I'll do uh, a couple of other things as well. Who knows? Let's see what I have in store for this bike. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.